So this is the hammer. I found it at a garage sale for two bucks. You can find these at garage sales, estate sales, junkyards, trash, all over the place. Hammer heads are abundant without handles. And there's a reason. It seems that people are afraid to make their own handle for a hammer. And that's what this video is set out to do, is to teach you how to make your own handle so that you can rehab these hammer heads and have awesome hammers for very little to no money at all. The hammer is one of the most important parts in your shop. So go out there, find yourself a whole bunch of hammer heads, and follow along. We're going to go ahead and make some handles, and you'll find out it's a lot easier than you thought. So without wasting any time, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to chalk this up in the vise. We're going to knock out the old handle, and you could do this a couple different ways. I just like to grab a chisel and knock it out. Pretty easily done. I've decided that I'd like to clean this hammer head up, so I've grabbed a little bucket here. I'm going to completely submerge it and this white vinegar that I have here. And this is a very, very inexpensive way to do this. Now, if you do think you know what type of hammer this is, take a moment to leave it in the comments below. I'd be interested to see what you guys think about this hammer. I know what it is, and I'll tell you a little later in the video. So this is after a quick two hour soaking. I'm just gonna hit it with a little brush that I have here. Now we have four hours, we're gonna to go to six hours here. And I just let it soak in that vinegar and let the vinegar do the work. See how the rust just wipes right off after a while? I do like to take it out periodically, clean it up to allow that vinegar to penetrate just a little bit deeper into the pores because there was some pretty serious pitting on this piece. As you can see, the very inexpensive white vinegar from Walmart does an extremely good job. You don't need to go out and buy any super expensive like rust, evapo rust stuff or rust dissolvers. The uh, white vinegar just works super good for me. I do think it's a good idea for normal practice after you use vinegar or something like this to go ahead and wash it with soap and water and then neutralize it with baking soda just to be sure. Now I've decided to go ahead and clean this up just a little bit well, on my grinder. There were some edges here and stuff that I think that can be clean and I wanted to clean up the face of this hammer. So I'm just taking it over to my grinder with a uh, 220 grit belt and doing some cleanup work on it before I finish it. Now these are Scotch-Brite belts. This is a surface conditioning belt and I'm using this belt for a very specific reason. I want to condition the entire surface of the hammer because the next process that I'm going to do, I want to age the look of the hammer because right now all this cleanup has left my hammer head looking brand new and I don't want the hammer to have a new appearance like this. So the hammer looks great, but it looks new and it's polished. And that's not really the look I'm going for for a hammer that's over 100 years old. So the first thing I'm going to do here in this next process is I'm going to make sure it's completely cleaned with acetone and I'm going to use a product called Oxba Blue from Brownells. This is a cold bluing solution. I like to put it in a spray bottle because I think it goes on more evenly when I spray it on versus when I try to rub it on with a rag. And if you're using a rag, you definitely want to pour out some of the Oxfo Blue into a separate container so that you're not contaminating the entire container with metal particles because that could uh, effectively render the entire bottle useless. This stuff is fairly expensive and you have to pay a hazmat fee to have it shipped, but I use Oxfo Blue for all kinds of different projects from knife making to gunsmithing to hammer restoration here. Alright guys, and now what you've all come here for making the handle. Now I've selected some pieces of Honduran rosewood. I can get these pieces very inexpensively from a local wood shop. These are just cutoffs that are in a bin. I think I pay two to three dollars each for these. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a template of the eye of the hammer. So I just put a piece of paper on the hammer head here and I make an indention. There's your template. Go ahead and cut that out. And then the next thing we're going to do is I use some contact adhesive and I'm going to glue it to the top of my handle stave. Pretty simple process here, just spray it on, figure out where center is, I eyeball the center, and then I stick it on there. The next thing you're going to want to do is decide the depth of your hammer head and draw a line on the handle material. You'll see it right there over to the right of my grinder. There's the line. That's going to give me enough meat to go all the way through the hammer head and protrude from the top of the hammer head slightly. This is very self-explanatory. Now all I'm doing is removing the excess material 
to where it matches the template here. Very simple to make it made up to the hammerhead. Add a little contour to the handle. I like a Coke bottle shape, so I'm going to take a little more meat out near the top, and then I'm going to take a little bit of meat out near the bottom. And then to round off my edges and to make everything perfectly symmetrical, I give myself some grind two lines. I, I use a wing divider and I just scribe a line on all four sides and then I grind off the material from line to line. And that creates four nice flat facets that are all symmetrically correct around the, the circumference of the handle. And then you just blend all your lines together. This is a very no-brainer way of building a, a handle for anything in your shop. This is how you get your handle to stay on. You're going to want to cut a groove in the portion of the handle that goes through the hammerhead. And later on, you'll see why this groove is so important to keeping the handle on. I did find it quite interesting as to how you install a handle on a hammerhead or a tomahawk. You'll see that I flip it upside down here and I hammer the bottom of the stave. And what that actually does is it drives the hammer up on and it gives you an incredibly tight fit. Now the hammerhead is effectively installed, but it's not permanently installed. We still have another task. Here's where we drive in the bite. There's a lot of different ways to do this also. I just used a little bit of two-part epoxy. I'm going to go ahead and completely bathe the inside of the groove that we cut and all around the top just to keep water out of there. And then I've taken and I've created a wedge out of a piece of desert ironwood. It's just a piece of scrap that I had laying around that was good, nice, solid wood. You can use any type of wood. But I created a wedge, and now we're going to hammer it down in there. And that uh, effectively locks the hammerhead to the handle. It's not going to come off now. Now, since I did choose to use Honduran rosewood, and it's an extremely hard wood, I'm going to polish it up with a little mother's compound here. And it just gives it a really nice shine. Now I'm going to take you out in the sunlight and show you some cool pictures of this thing all finished up. The handle came out great. It's Honduran rosewood. I chose that wood because it was a good solid hardwood and very inexpensive for my local shop. I have $5 in this hammer. It's easily worth $100. Bucks. This is a blacksmithing flatters hammer. This is, this is not meant to be swung. It's meant to be struck by another hammer. So I use this when I'm forging my blades. After I finish forging my blade to shape, I lay this on top of the blade and I strike the backside of it with a hammer and it helps me flatten out my stock. Hey, just a reminder guys, likes are free. All you gotta do is hit this little thumbs up icon right under the video. That supremely helps me out as a creator here on YouTube. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the content and I'm gonna go ahead and put a video up right here that I think you guys might enjoy next.